Right, so here's another quick update uh, for the channel. Topic for today uh, is probably just a report back on some progress or an update really. Um, at the start of this year, so going back to January, uh, we're now in October, but back in January I'd started a new, a new job. Uh, and I've often described it to myself over the course of this year as I've kind of progressed further through the role as being maybe for the first time ever, uh, potentially the dream job for myself or maybe not necessarily the dream job but one a job that I've probably enjoyed the most yeah so that's been quite an interesting thing to kind of think about that and then kind of analyze well you know why would I say that it is the dream job and it's probably a lot to do come to think of it and what well, one to do with the job and the company where I was working that's absolutely no doubt about that there's a great great organization and a great team that I was actually part of. Uh, that's undoubtedly the case. Uh, but I'd also have to say that given the journey that I've been on this year, my outlook and, sorry, how I was able to see myself, uh, I would say I've never, it's, it's, it's something that I've never actually experienced before. I can only say that reflecting on how life was for myself previous to this year. So. Started in January, uh, first saw a psychiatrist to just start talking about uh, attention deficit disorder uh, in relation to myself in March, was diagnosed in April, and here we are now, we're actually in October, and you know, there's been a hell of a lot of discovery and uh, self-exploration and kind of, you know, a lot has been figured out, and a lot, have been, a lot of, sorry, has been crystallized in my own mind well, probably best described as the view that I have of myself today compared to the view that I might have had of myself in the past. In the past, I could never really, uh, again, I've mentioned it in a number of videos that are there in the channel. Uh, in the past, I was very, uh, had very low self-confidence and I had a pretty low opinion of myself. A lot of that is to do with uh, the inner critic the evil inner critic that was, you know, sitting within, within my own mind, uh, and that's, you know, been there in my life in its entirety up until this year, up until five or six months ago. It started to something changed. I've mentioned in other videos. It changed on my birthday last year, uh, so back in October, so almost a year ago. Uh, at the day, oh, sorry, at the point where my son was diagnosed, and that was just for me the link between my son and myself, and the genetic connection between him being diagnosed and me thinking, "Holy hell, Troy, that's it for you." Something changed at that point. However, if you would look at it on a graph, you would say that you know there's a trajectory of self-confidence increasing uh, from October, November, December into March, and from at the point where I started, you know, the graph started to change, I should draw a graphic if I could, maybe I'll do that, I have an infographic, but you would see that the trajectory of self-confidence has gone up. When I started the role, I would say in January, my confidence was kind of shaky and, you know, it was a very, if I reflect on that period of time, I had a hell of a lot going on in my own mind at that time. I had one, get, there was the, the natural version of me, so the one that had always been there, the one that's kind of lacked confidence and doubted his capabilities and uh, was my own worst enemy in my mind. Um, so there was me, that person, starting in the new role. So again, I started there. I really tried to be confident, but I, at most, most days I believe you know, I, I struggled in the same way that I had done in, in the past. And in the weeks leading into the point where, or the time, sorry, where I sat down and spoke to my psychiatrist for the very first time, I would say my stress levels, if you look at it on a graph, it'd be off the screen, off the charts. It was extremely high. I was a nervous bloody wreck. You know, it was the, the, the excitement, the anticipation, uh, you know, oh, my thoughts were all over the place. There's no other way to describe it. You know, I was just a tightly wound spring. But as we got closer to that second appointment, so towards the end of that one month gap in between, probably my levels of stress had gone up again. Um, my confidence and the usual 
doubting myself is still there because you know there was a fear in the back of my mind that maybe uh, as part of the evaluation that my psychiatrist may determine that I don't in fact actually have um, the condition and I'm potentially back to square one. So that certainly hung heavy in my mind and it was a weight that I was carrying a lot, I guess, on, on my shoulders. And I can only say that, hell, what a relief it was on the day that I actually went back to see my psychiatrist for the actual you know, D-Day, take two, diagnosis day, um, one month later in April. In one of my very first videos, I talked about the gift I was given on my birthday last year when my son was re received his diagnosis. But the day that I actually received my diagnosis, you know, I, I remember crystal clear sitting there in the office with my doctor and we had to go through, look at the paperwork that my parents, my mother had done and my wife had done and the self-assessment that I had provided. Yep, that was all fairly conclusive, That that's fine. We did an online assessment. Uh, oh, it was some kind of rating scale. Let me just go and find a bit of paperwork. It talks about the type of test that it was. Um, come back because I found myself rooting around in my office trying to find the bloody form or the print off that the doctor gave me that day. I uh, couldn't find it. So anyway, I could have spent a long time searching for it in my office. Crap that spread everywhere. I couldn't, but in that process, I didn't remember what the name of uh, the assessment was. And it was called a QB check. If I reflect on how I was that day when I sat down to do that test, uh, and how he told me my levels of stress went through the roof, because uh, I'm sitting there, and he also actually told me, getting back to, this is the bit that I need to mention, he said that you'll have 20 minutes to complete this test, here's some instructions, and he explained to me, to them to me very quickly. Uh, in that moment, I could feel like I was almost gonna start sweating bullets. Um, if I'm honest, because I was like, oh my God, he's giving me these instructions. How the hell am I meant to take all of this in and then sit there and actually do this test? Anyway, there was one, one interesting thing that he also mentioned as part of his kind of, this is what I need to tell you before you begin. He also mentioned that at some stage during the test, the telephone might ring. Um, don't worry about it. Just carry on doing what you're doing. But yes, after having been given the instructions and becoming extremely stressed and concerned that, okay, how am I ever going to remember what he's just told me uh, I needed to do, you know, the test began. And it didn't take very long at all uh, where this test came up. And I think, I believe it was a series of, you know, squares and triangles and circles and you had to click your space bar at every change in sequence or something along those lines. Uh, I very quickly found myself in a state of almost meltdown. Uh, this thing went on for 20 minutes. And, you know, within, within a few minutes, not even, within seconds, I just totally forgotten anything at all about what he told me. And I was just a bloody mess. Uh, and that went on. Well, I tried to, as I'm sitting there trying to concentrate on this thing was changing a shape and a pattern on the screen quite regularly, quite frequently. And, you know, most of the time I'm panicking, thinking I don't remember at all what he's told me what the rules were, but what the hell, let's just go with it. And then I'd have moments of thinking, like maybe it was this. Uh, and I remember after about, in, the whole time he's sitting behind me as well. So I'm sitting at his desk in the, in the, in his, clinic and I don't know I'm in my mind I'm thinking is he observing me is he seeing me stressing and all this kind of stuff going on in my mind it was just like you know if you could have I would have loved to have seen what the camera was viewing in terms of uh my facial reactions and facial expressions and all that kind of stuff because I'm sure it was you know well made for an interesting made for an interesting set of viewing and anyway 10, 15 minutes into this thing, I do recall the telephone rang. And at that point, my stress levels were already up here. Uh, and when the phone rang, I remember. I also remember my stress levels going through the roof because I had this thought of, what the fuck is this guy's telephone doing ringing in the middle of a consult where I'm meant to be, well, surely his receptionist, whoever knows, uh, that 
Raj is talking to Troy, Raj shouldn't be taking any calls. Anyway, so I'm getting stressed about that, forgetting about all about touching the thing, forgetting what's happening on screen, you know, forgetting how I'm meant to be doing the assessment, getting more and more wound up about the fact that this phone's ringing. Then it dawned on me, I was like, hold on a minute, you numpty. The doctor told you just before the thing started that the phone might ring. So forget about it, just get back into it and move on. So again, that's another clear indicator to myself. Wasn't it was an indicator in the moment because I'd forgotten all about the fact that he told me that the phone might ring. But it was an absolute clear indicator uh, to me, certainly in the assessment afterwards, that, well, anyway, after the phone rang, there was probably less than five minutes left in the whole thing. We got to the end and I was sweating bullets and I was just like ready to collapse on the desk at that point. So the thing had ended, Raj sat down in his chair. We then looked at the results and no surprise to myself and certainly no surprise to him, I think, from what he probably would have witnessed sitting there behind me. Uh, the results of this QB check were uh, extremely obvious that uh, Troy does not handle stress at all, very well, ordinarily, and he certainly can't follow instructions. He's certainly got a very bloody bad memory, and all of this kind of other stuff that I was experiencing was all evident in the results. Now, I'm going to put the results here somewhere, maybe... They'll just pop up now and you can have a quick look at those. Pause it if you need to. Uh, I haven't quite figured out yet how to stick an image on this screen. So somewhere here where you can look at it. But anyway, very evident. <sighs> you can see in there that there's the typical person and then there's my results. Uh, and my results are just way off the, you know, way, away, a long way from being normal. So it was uh, shortly thereafter, having completed that test, that we sat down and all the paperwork was spread out on his desk and he... The doctor turned to me and he said, well, Troy, we're at the point now where we, you know, or he gets to make a determination. And he, you know, turned to me and he said, oh, it's in my kind of learned and educated assessment based on everything that we've gone through and looked at. I would have to let you know or advise you or something along these lines, Troy, that it is in my opinion that you do actually have ADHD uh, high on the inattentive side, given what we just talked about. And also the hyperactivity was, you know, that QB check measured all of these things as well as the paperwork and the, and the, the prior assessments we filled out. It measured it all. And um, you know, within a few nanoseconds from that point on, you know, I burst into tears and um, became a babbling mess for a number of minutes uh, with feelings of absolute relief. No other way to describe it really. Relief that finally, um, yeah, I'd received, you know, the diagnosis. And the rest they say is history. Fast forward to where we are today in October six months on from that day. And getting back to the, the original point of this story was the fact that all of that happened at the same time that I was only then, so in April, I was really only three months into my new job. Uh, and holy hell. Have things been different ever since? That's for sure. Different in an absolute positive, in a very much improved way. In every possible way. No other way to describe it. You know, stay tuned. And uh, maybe I'll do a part two for this video. Uh, and come back and talk some more. Because there's, you know, a lot to be shared because there's been a hell of a lot that's been learned in the period of time since oh well, there's been a hell of a lot sorry that i've learned about myself and all the craziness that has been going on in my own mind uh 
for pretty much every part of my life up until now. And I believe that in itself is worth sharing because I'm sure I'm not the only one 